I've just got back to the vehicle. Boys are coming up the track. I'm gonna get the burgers cooking now for them. That'll give them a bit of incentive smelling that bacon and onions cooking to get them up the hill. Anyway, strap in. Uh, we spend five days in the Alpine going hard looking for a stag. Uh, geez, we covered some miles and uh, yeah, the boys did really well. So sit down, get, get comfy, grab yourself a drink and uh, enjoy the content. Now, if you do, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, make a comment. If you're looking for any other content, Patreon's where you need to go. There's a free tier, there's a $5 tier, $10, $25, and then it goes up into the company support. But if you do have a company and you want to support me um, and have me advertise your company on my channel, please contact me and we'll arrange something. Anyway, better get this cooking so the guys can uh, have a good feed before we uh, send them back home to Sydney. But anyway, it's been a good trip. We've hunted hard. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the uh, the different angles with the GoPro. And... Righty, oh, here we are. You might recognise these two from last year, James and Chris, and uh, they've come back for a repeat. I'm I'm thinking they're probably pretty keen to uh, repeat last trip. If you've watched the video, you'll know what we're talking about. If you haven't, you need to go back and watch watch it. It was a pretty epic hunt. So. We did plan on hunting in here last year, but the snow was so low that we had to go down lower. Um, and we've had the same snowstorm come through, but luckily it was last week. So we've bashed our way in here, put a few extra pinstripes in the ute, I reckon. But yeah, definitely. we're here now, and uh, yeah, in we go. So let's uh, see what we can turn up in the next five days. Righto, that's the second time we've had to pull up for the rain. I put my jacket on, the boys put theirs on. We walked 500 metres and then stopped raining, so the boys took theirs off. I kept mine on. And uh, they started raining again, so I put my pants on. The boys put their jackets back on. It stopped raining again, but it looks like it's coming sort of in waves down the valley. And um, I think we were expecting snow down to 1,200 metres today, but then it sort of becomes quite mild. So hopefully this bit of cold weather hunkers the deer down and then they pop out like rabbits tomorrow and we can get amongst them. Haven't been in here for a month, um, so I have to sort of do a bit of a glassing session to find where the deer are hiding at the moment, but sure they'll be in their normal spots. Hopefully we can find Mr. Big. <coughs> right, eight, we've made it in. And uh, I'm just going to quickly set up camp and get out there for a look. So with the magic of television, ta-da! Weather's come in. It's got a little bit serious. Pretty cold. Wet. So we're all huddled under this tree trying to stay dry. <laughs> but hopefully this weather comes through tonight. And um, yeah, we can get a clear break in the weather tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Hopefully that'll bring the deer right out. A very young stag, I think. So you find that red rock in that gully? Find that vein, that rock vein, and then move. Is that another one there? Uh, can you see that red rock that's in the gully in your binos? We should be able to see the deer just to the right of it, but oh, slightly lower, but not by much. Like if you're looking at that rock, it should stand out to you. Yeah, 
and there's two more. Oh, they're a bit hard to see now, but they're way lower. That's a big girl, that one. I caught that on video. They were playing, I think. Acting like tools because it's not raining anymore. Wow. Yeah. Look at those other two, yeah. They just took off like racehorses. They're way over there. Wow. Yep, well that's last light. We um, saw that bunch of hinds running around the paddock like bloody teenagers really. Um, so I don't know what was going on there. I think just because that rain had come through and that had stopped and feeling a bit frisky. But you know, we've got a bunch of deer over there which uh, basically the only deer we've seen this afternoon. So we're going to go hunt them in the morning. See if we can pick a stag out of that mob of does. And um, yeah, but anyway, back to camp. It's freezing cold. We get a fire going. I think. We're socked right in with low cloud at the moment, so we're just going to sit down and take a break. Hopefully it sort of blows through. We can start glassing. There's not much point in continuing until that happens. It's finally burnt this low cloud off practically but it's like 8.30 so we've lost like two hours practically of uh, first light this morning to the, to the cloud but 
We'll start looking for some deer in the sun now. It's been quite cold. Righto, change of plans. This cloud just keeps rolling in. We've, we've lost the first couple of hours of the morning, so we need water. We're going to hunt down to the river, collect some water, and then hunt back around underneath camp and back up to camp, collect the wood for the rest of the week, wait for this cloud to nick off, and then head out for an afternoon hunt. took to pretty much 11 o'clock for that um, all that low cloud to disperse and I've seen a big hind just sneak through a clearing over here and we're just watching a young yearling over here at the moment it's 11.30 now so we're um, we're going to race back to camp shortly and just gather some firewood for the rest of the week and uh, chill out for lunch and then we'll have another go at that group of deer over there for this afternoon. We'll push in nice and close so that if we do see something just on dark we can do something about it. afternoon hunt. Practically a carbon copy of this morning minus the low cloud. So we, we saw those group of hinds on that face over there uh, come down late yesterday afternoon and we were planning to be on them in the morning but the cloud had other ideas so we're just going to do it again this afternoon and the idea is that we're just close enough for a shot for that uh, stag that comes out right on last light so hopefully the hinds kind of do what they did last evening and we can be in a better position to take advantage of it we're in position for the afternoon hunt and um, while we've set up here is yesterday afternoon we saw a bunch of hinds come out on this clearing just before dark and they were mucking around running around like idiots I think a lot of that's to do with the weather because the weather's been a bit shit and it sort of stopped for a bit so I'm pretty happy to get out. They're also sort of starting to, to get a bit frisky, I think. And um, so we had enough hinds there to, to make a, a stag be hanging around. So the idea is we'll try and see if we can re-spot them if they come out in a similar spot this evening. And we're, you know, we're 400 yards away, so you know, if a stag comes out last night, get a good look at him at least uh, whereas last night we're looking from about a kilometre so it's a bit hard to see right on last light whether there's something lurking in the shadows but anyway that's the plan wish us luck first one for the afternoon only two gullies away from where I thought they might be hopefully it's uh, another deer
don't think these are part of the deer that, that we saw yesterday afternoon. These are other deer. I haven't spotted anything in the same place where we did yesterday afternoon yet. Well, we never got onto any of those deer from yesterday afternoon. Spotted a couple on the next hill over. That's about it. Pretty quiet. Yeah, we're going to head back to camp and get a good fire going. It's, it's coming in pretty chilly. Are you tripping me in this jet boil? Sweet. Real early in the morning, uh, about 10 to 4, uh, a big thunder roll woke me up. Just as I woke up, my stretcher bed was shaking. And so, yeah, we obviously had a fairly good earthquake. So it'll be interesting to uh, hear when we get back home um, whereabouts the epicenter was or whether it was just up in the mountains here and no one knows about it. But, yeah, it's like a big roll of thunder. And then, yeah, my stretcher bed went, Ooh. these guys slept through it. There you go. Changing plans today, we're going across the river, glass into some other country on the other side there. Um, so a bit of a big walking day today. Made it up to my intended glassing spot. Perfect morning. It's not a breath of wind. The sun's gonna come out. A little bit cloudy, but it's 
there's got to be a deer in here. But we have had hunters in here prior to us coming in. I've, I've followed their boot marks. So it depends on how how long they spent in here and how much walking around they did and whether they shot something as to how well we're going to go. I would have expected to see deer already, which is alarming. But anyway, give it some time. I'm going to push right back up in there. There's heaps of glass into there. There's hours of glass in here. Yeah, well, we only saw that hind in Yeelan in that gully. I spotted a hind and a calf way, 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 way away. So we've crossed over and we're pushing into some country I haven't been into for, since I started hunting here in the early 2000s. A good game trail to follow. We're just going to pop around the corner here and look down on some nice faces. We're here now. I can't see myself getting these guys back here again tomorrow, so... We're just going to put up with a bit more pain to get to where we can sit and watch for lunch. And then um, we're going to slowly make our way back to camp this evening. Just had lunch and a bit of a kip. James has stood up and gone, there's a deer. It's about 10 to 1 in the afternoon, so.
just walking down this ridge to find somewhere to glass out. I've got up a couple of deer, I've got a bit of a look at them, like a couple of hinds. Anyway, I'll keep pushing down, see if we can find a spot to glass out from. Might be that old girl with the knobs on her head. I saw those couple of hinds over there, but nothing else poked out. So we just got using the last hour of light to push for stalk through some real nice country into a couple of wallows. Let's see what we can turn up. Good old Murphy's Law. I'll do this big walk today looking for deer. Just glass back towards camp and there's a bloody deer. Bugger all from where we normally sit and glass from. Just a big, big hind, but anyway, still got a little bit of walking to do yet. Picked up my game camera. It's been up on that wallow for about five, six weeks. Had a couple of photos on it, nothing. Uh, nothing to be really excited about. So I pulled it down. bush hunting all morning found some ruddy marks from one deer we've put up just checked another wallow one stag, one spiky the same hind a couple of times a couple of dingoes that's it, that's, um, that's over about five weeks Before lunch there we put up a group of hinds out of a nice gully but didn't get a chance to get a good look at them really. They just tore off. And uh, just after lunch we've gone and checked out that wallow which was reasonably fresh. Uh, nothing in it. Now we're just poking through some 
fix sort of country back towards the river, cross back over and back to camp. Righto, zebra's tip of the day. If you're hunting new country, you come across a log that uh, has mud on it. Or just a log that's intersex, a uh, good game trail. Pay attention to it, see if it's got mud on it. Sort of can give you a little indicator that there's a wallow not that far away. Obviously no one's been to this wallow in a while. <laughs> I've just left the boys back at camp. It's four o'clock. They said they were going to come down and join me once I'd had a bit of a rest. Um, but yeah, I think they're pretty cooked. We uh, turned around at lunchtime at 5.1 kilometres travelled, 500 odd metres of elevation gain, um, and then had to come back to camp from there. So a pretty big day, and we had a big day yesterday. I can't remember how many stories James said we climbed yesterday, but it was over 100, I think, 70, 70, or I don't know. It's a heap. Um, but anyway, I'm going to spend the next couple of hours glassing, because you just never know, one might just pop out. Seemed to be very hard to find a stag at the moment. We haven't seen a stag all trip, not even a little one. But I think... Yeah, we've had about 23 deer sightings. Some of them would be double ups. Um, but yeah, scattered hinds. Just one here, one there, a couple here, apart from that first afternoon. But anyway. Checked a couple of wallows. Not very much going on. Like, and I've had cameras on two of those wallows for over five weeks now. And one only had um, 12 activations, the other one had like 17, and a couple of them were dingoes, so, anyway, better get busy, oh, that looks like a deer right there, deer's yeah, deer. false alarm, the wind's picked up and there must have been a black stump and the branches are coming over it and then and it looked like the animal was moving through, but, you know, it's just a stump, <laughs> got excited, yeah, only picked up those two horns from that yearling, this afternoon in exactly the same place they were yesterday afternoon so they're obviously not moving far but nothing else of interest anywhere so pretty quiet anyway back to camp to warm up next to the fire James has got it going good feed and a good sleep big walk out day tomorrow I haven't even seen the Choo Choo train once yet. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. You were like creating a cloud. <laughs> about 15 minutes in to the walk out spotted those hinds right back in there again luckily it wasn't a big stag that we had to race back in to get 
I might have tested the fellas out. Where's the other fella? I haven't even seen him. Where are you, Chris? Zebra's tip of the day. Hiking poles. If you're not using them to hike in and out, then you're missing out. And when you're going uphill like we are now, you want to shorten your pole's length so that your arms are overextending up like this because your power is in sort of just around that 90 degree bent elbow. So shorten up your poles, shorten up your stride and don't reach too far in front because that's only giving you stability for balance. You want power, you want to take the weight off your back, off your legs. Keep them in close like this. Really drive your shoulders into it. You can really make a mile. We'll just make just take the strain off your legs a fair bit by driving these shoulders with your legs. When you get into scrub like this, you don't want to fight it. So don't be reefing your poles through and fighting it. If one gets stuck, just let it drag through. Don't use it, use the other one. Sometimes there's more effort in dragging them through than it is just to not use them. Also remove the ski discs snow and mud discs because all they do is grip on the scrub when I'm going uphill I don't use the straps I like to put my thumb on top that way I can really put the weight into the pole and I'm not stressing my grip anyway first dozen times you use walking poles you'll probably hate them until you learn to use them now I just don't hike without them better wait for the boys Right, eh? Continuing on with walking poles. Going downhill now. So I want to extend them out. And you want to get them out front of you. And when you get to an obstacle, you can go put one down. Keep the other one above you. And grind your weight into it. I like to have my thumb on top, almost palming it. So I can really drive some weight into them. I sort of strategically place them so that I can get a few steps out of each pole. Anyway, this is going to be Zebra's tip of the trip. Walking poles. Right, eh? here's a bit of a technique for you when it's quite steep and you've got a load on and you know, your knees are starting to sort of hurt a bit or whatever turn to the side of the hill go down and drag your poles down with you the poles you can keep your weight on and keep your balance and you walk down the hill three times faster than you would if you were just going tip 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 because when you start getting down that steep stuff you tend to go a little shuffle steps like this. Whereas if you go turn, oh my God, turn, you to turn the other way. I just keep the poles down. You can see how quick you can go downhill. It uses different muscles too, so when your knees and legs are a bit had it, it can give you a little break. Call it the zebra shuffle. <laughs> I'm not saying I invented it. Probably I did. Probably only works for me too. If 
probably look like a fool coming off the hill. <clears throat> anyway, one more steep downhill and then whew, uphill to the ute. So if you did enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and make a comment. And if you're looking for more content from me, I've got a bunch over at Patreon. So follow the link in the description, and you'll find that there's multiple tiers there. Even a free one, which every now and again I upload some free stuff to. Um, heaps of podcasts, heaps of learning. If you're new to hunting, it's well worth the, the investment. Well, looks like James has got second place. With him, big unit. Here he is. He's even got a smile on his face. That's because he can smell the bacon. <laughs>